Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about 4A2 employer sponsored visas. So we are currently on the department website and most of the time the clients and we maybe just find information on the department website through visa application and citizenship tab. Okay, but uh, to be aware of the information provided by the department's website might be not accurate so we always need to check as agent we all need to check the legislation so first of all is 4a2 visa okay 4a2 visa is a um, replacement of 457 visa it has three stages which is a sponsorship nomination and a visa application although it contains three stages it can be lodged at the same time but you must lodge sponsorship first and then lodge nomination and we lodge visa application okay so first of all we need to determine whether the clients can be nominated under 4a2 visa it's whether there is a sponsor we have been asked so many people so many clients that can we get work visa they can't if they don't have a sponsor, which means if they don't have a job offer, there's no opportunity for them to be nominated under 4A2 visa. So first of all, we need to tell if they have a sponsor, okay, and the client being offered a job, then what shall we need to do? We actually need to find out whether the client's occupation is on the uh, relevant occupation list and whether it's on a long-term or short-term occupation list. This is the first thing we need to determine. Now, uh, on our website, you can have a look. Um, the legislative instru instrument for 4A2 occupation is EMI 18 slash 408. Uh, all you need to do is just open the link here and we will need you to the legislation. So don't be you know intimidated by the information it's really easy we can use the control plus f you can see there's a search section here and we can search around to see which occupation the client is marketing specialist okay we actually have a few occupations here marketing specialist then we need to see, okay it's on the occupation we in on the, which occupation list this should be a not short term one. Yeah, it's a short term occupation list. If the client is on a short term of occupation list, this means the client cannot obtain permanent residency. The short term occupation list under the current 4A2 visa is that they can only be granted for two years and then they can only be extended for another two years. This means that will be no permanent residency for them. Uh, exemption for Chinese clients, of course, they can be because of trade agreement with Australia. So they can be granted for four years and they can be extended another for four years. Um, but in general, if the client is not Chinese client, then they can only be granted for two years if the occupation is on the short term occupation list. Okay, difficult to be finding this information but it's really easy we can use the search bar here find out clients um, sometimes you don't need to find all information here you don't need to type all the keywords here you just type one or two because it come out with different occupations you can see when I type in marketing it shows marketing specialist which is 87 in here and there is another marketing occupation sales and marketing manager you can see the code here NZX code code one three one 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 two and a previous one okay two two five one one three sometimes these are under the same umbrella probably they do the same thing but okay uh, that's different so we can have a think about whether it's best occupation for them for now, you can have a look for to make sure that it's on the occupation list. Oh yeah, that's good. They can be nominated as a marketing specialist and they can only be granted for two years. And then the occupation, the employment letter, of course, you have to say be you are offered for, for two years only. So um, the employee 
Of course, they must understand this will be a temporary visa, which means which what they call genuine stay, a, a statement, entrance statement, which they must make statement to confirm that they understand the position is for two years and the visa is for two years only. Okay, sometimes you can see the number here, which we call caveat. Okay, you can see the caveat here, which means if you have to be very careful if they have a numbers here. So marketing specialists is very, um, it's a lot changed. So, so they have KB here, it's number 2, 11 and, 11 and 19. Okay. Where are they? Uh, not a list, terrible list. 19, 19 is a really tricky one. The position in the business has to annual turnover of less than 1 million. If if the this this business turnover is less than one million, the client cannot be nominated under a marketing specialist because this is the position you meet. And then what about the other one? One okay, is it retail? No, you can't be nominated. Okay, so this gives you a quick example of how to search the occupation. We go back to the website again. The first neat thing we need to determine determine whether they can be nominated under work visa for A2 is whether the occupation they, they have a sponsor. The second one is whether their occupation is on the occupation list. You can just click here, quick do a quick search and find out. Uh, we can do another one, IT. So it's really um common occupation. Uh, IT can't do anything with IT. Computer engineer We've got so many engineer uh, qualifications. ICT support engineer, um, and then you can find information here to see whether the client's occupation it's on the list, and to determine whether the client actually does the same thing, I will use this one to determine. But this is not the right one. This is not hundred percent accurate. Use this search, okay. Okay. Now we we did find out whether we did have a look about whether the client can be, you know, his work, his his, his experience related to ICD system tax engineer, which is two six three two one three. Just copy. Start your search. Remember, this is not hundred percent accurate. Uh, as agents, we do check with ABS statistics. Um, but for you, I think for quick guidance, we just use this one to determine. Okay, that's good. Okay, so this one shows the clients what kind of uh, jobs. Uh, he has to do and he's nominated to do this. This is a specific a description about this in here. Okay. Um, most of times a lot of clients ask whether the clients need to do skill assessment for 4A2 visa. I would say most of uh, 4A2 occupations you do not require skill assessment. Only some trades qualifications trades are uh, a jobs you need to do skill assessment now who does this skill assessment this is trade TIA sorry oh yes um TIA when you have a look about this TIA okay again I just want to repeat um, so first of all we need to determine whether the client has an employer or not if they have an employer and we need to check whether the occupation is on the occupation list and then we find out occupation is on the legislative instrument in here now we need to have think about oh the client asked me whether he needs a skill assessment owning specific clients sorry countries 
they are required they are required to do skill assessment under 48 visa okay so we are in the trade recognition of australia.gov.au they have they have a few programs here in fact this is what they called tss skill assessment so we have a look here click here for nominate occupation and countries okay that's it only these occupations they all trade okay with these countries they need skill assessment other than that no skill assessment is required okay if a client for example from brazil and he's a fitter then he needs skill assessment if the client is from uk and he's a fitter no he does not require a skill assessment okay is that clear so all the occupations most of the occupation they do not require skill assessment only certain occupations which there has to be trade occupations that the clients from specific countries require skill assessment so you have really really easy just do a quick one carpenter if you can't find so carpenter yeah they, they do this skill assessment but only the these clients from these countries they require skill assessment if we say uh i don't know we say and uh, marketing oh no that's nothing so it's really easy just do a search you don't need to look through everything again you don't it's just a waste of time isn't it okay now we are clear now first of all determine a client as a sponsor and secondly we determine whether the client's occupation is on the list and thirdly we determine whether they need skill assessment and that's it if you happy with the three criteria if you're happy with one two three then the client can be nominate under 482 visa okay very simple and easy of course there's a, some a interesting part of whether they can be approved and at all the stage we cannot guarantee we cannot say your visa will be approved because there will be a, so many circumstances appear to the company as well as the client and so many things we're not sure but at this stage you should be able to seal the deal you should be able to say i'm happy with this you can engage with us okay um now if the client asks you spot department fee it's it's easy really easy you can actually search yourself you don't need to ask us again i think it's happy for you to search you can see for under the 4a2 visa we we separate these two stages and on first tab the government fee it says a link to the visa price uh, uh, link okay we have a look what how much they need to pay for each state for sponsorship the company needs to pay for 420 for nomination it's 330 for visa application if it's a, that's a long-term occupation list this is the price 2450 if the short-term occupation is that this is the price this is what they require to pay as a, a primary applicant and uh, rest of the uh, fees we can have a look in here temporary visas okay simple very simple and easy it's fun. it's here there's nothing hidden that's a department going to charge plus uh, plus credit card surcharge i believe it's 1.32 percent now um so yeah uh, we have everything covered here so how much they need to pay for each stage and how much are you going to quote for the professional fee this is what we quote them it's according to omar's guidance as well as market rate and um, that's nothing to argue basically this is the amount of work we're going to do the sponsorship how who's going to who, who can sponsor the sponsor can be an established company and it can be also a startup it's okay in theory according to statistics that if the client if the company is registered today they can nominate of course they will have to show they have financial to support like to hire this person isn't it so uh, in theory it can be established or a new a startup company in order to meet the sponsorship 
requirements. Okay, we don't. I don't want to go to Legend.com. It'd be too complex for you. But I can just quickly go to three. What what is our legislative um um grounds on on um so four five seven? Where is the four five seven? That isn't no. Wow, what's going on here? Hmm? It's not critical. Oh yeah, okay. So this is legislative ground regulation two point seven two. But I've already outlined here. Okay, I've already outlined here. In order to be sponsored to be approved, now this is interesting because nowadays the sponsor can have a five year sponsorship, regardless whether the company is a startup or a established company. Five years, regardless. Okay, now when I'm recording this. This has not come into effect. Okay, training benchmark. Oh, sorry, S S S A F. Okay, hasn't come into effect. But I think when after I upload this, it will become because it already passed. Uh, it reached the third reading, received a royal assent, and it will be passed by first quarter of this year, two thousand and eighteen. To the first quarter, it's a was um announced by the department. So most likely, when you read when you view my tutorial um this one, the company will require to make a contribution of this amount of money. This will be a calculation. Okay, this will be in calculation. It will be applicable to all sponsors. No argument. They will will do the calculation based on. Um, their own. Uh, I think the mathematics is too difficult for me to do, to do this. But uh, later on, when they make announcement, we'll be able to calculate how much they need to pay. Basically, this is really easy, isn't it? They just need to pay. Um, okay. Now, in order to be approved as a sponsor, they need to evidence that they are operating. Okay. Uh, where is the okay? Okay, there's no nothing wrong with the company. Okay, uh, they have to be operating legally and operating. So, which means they have to be providing ABN details and financial documents. Uh, in terms of this, I have a good checklist for you. What do we mean by financial documents? Yeah, balance sheet, financial report, but. Profit loss basically says the same thing, isn't it? They have an operation, they they are operating, they have a finance, they have sales, they have an in and out. Okay, so you can see why we ask the client for this information, because we have to satisfy the department that the client the, the company is operating, isn't it? Okay, and the company has the financial capacity to sponsor this uh, candidate. They can't be in loss, great loss. And then they can't, they can't, they can't. And but sometimes it will, it can do as well. We will, um, you know, assess all the individual clients individually. Okay. Now we will go. I'm talking where? Okay. Sorry. Nomination. The nomination part is most tricky part because a lot of four eight five four five seven visa was refused. I heard that they were refused because of genuine. Same genuine position. This is really tricky, um. So you don't need to worry about this too much. Once you have a company, once you have a client's resume, we will determine the best occupation for the candidate. This is reason. This is reason. The definition of that job is according to Australian Statistic Bureau, which means Bureau of Statistics. Sorry, which means they um. Okay, let me have a look. That that show you a called title. Okay, now we say community worker. Here we are. It's under welfare support workers. Okay, this is what a community worker or a welfare support worker does. What you actually do every day, this is what they department rely on. Australian Bureau of Statistics to determine what a job 
description should be. Okay. Now we've been through this normalization. No need to worry about that part. And visa application. Visa application easy. If the client has is, has a skill, has a qualification, and have experience, can do the work. Put it awesome. We just can do it. Um, and they can if they are on short long term occupation list. They can apply permanent state visa after three years with the same position and same employer. Bear in mind, department has different definition of same employer. A lot of people saying same employer means same ABN. This that is not the case. So always ask, always ask us whether the client can can be nominated. Even the ABN changed, even the company sold, even they work for different entity, but it's related to previous one. It can be done. Okay, so this is really complex. This area is complex. A lot of agents has, you know, have, have, they don't, they are not clear about this. We always need to seek uh, clarification. All right, then here we are. Now we have a checklist. Okay. So pretty much, if you ask this, you can do it yourself. Have that client, and we will send a checklist, basically everything. Once you clarify with clients, we'll talk to the client first, and then you provide information and upload to official. And this is checklist for employee. Forms you need to complete. Questionnaire, form 956, identification, experience. Uh, and the English requirement. Okay, this is we assume this is a single. That's a only one applicant. If they have, we have dependents, for example, a wife or a husband or children, then we need to demonstrate they, you know, they are relationship, right? Okay. Now, um, that's it. This is today's progress. Um, oh yeah, so today's uh, tutorial on the progress. You can see if we have done a sponsorship, fifty percent. Nomination almost there and visa application. Thank you. And then if you have any further questions, do feel free to contact me. That doesn't matter.